Today we are looking at the ideal gas equations. Uh, so let's uh, make a start. Let's look at the properties we're going to be investigating. Uh, these are known as the macroscopic properties of a gas because they're to do with large scale uh, things we can measure easily. So pressure, remember we're going to measure that in pascals, which is the same as newtons per meter squared. Uh, temperature, we're going to measure in Kelvin, and we'll talk more about that in a bit. And volume, we're going to measure in meters cubed. We'll also uh, mention mass of gas, uh, which would be in kilograms, uh, but we don't tend to include that in our equations. But often we'll be investigating, let's say, pressure and temperature. Uh, so we'll investigate them with an I, and we'll keep these two the same. Probably pretty confusing with the unit symbol, so let's just get rid of those. So if we keep two things uh, the same, we can see how the other two things vary. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, pressure caused by the particle of gas moving around. So this particle is going to move this way, collide with the edge of the container, bounce around, uh, and it's going to do a couple of things. It's going to exert a force um, over an area, and that's going to lead to a pressure, isn't it? Because pressure equals force over area. So when uh, asked to explain uh, why a particle exerts force, uh, it obviously collides with container first, which is probably useful to add. Exerts a force over an area, pressure equals force over area. So for a cold gas, it's going to be moving at a certain speed, exerting a certain force. If we make the gas hotter, if we increase the temperature, there you can see standard colors for hotter gas. Um, we know that the temperature of a gas will influence the speed of its particles. The kinetic energy is directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature of the gas. So if the Kelvin temperature goes up, the kinetic energy goes up by the same proportions. If we double the Kelvin temperature, we double the kinetic energy, which means that the speed of the particles is going to increase. So the first thing uh, we've got to remember is that we've got to work in Kelvin. Okay, we must, 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 must work in Kelvin for these uh, calculations. So for example, if you had 50 degrees C and you need to convert that to Kelvin, well, the conversion factor is to add 273. So 50 add 273 is 323, hopefully, Kelvin. Okay, if you want to go the opposite direction, so if you want to go from 400 Kelvin, um, you would minus 273, and that takes you to 127 degrees C. Obviously, uh, you need to remember that 273 number, and you need to remember if you end up with a negative Kelvin temperature, you've gone wrong somewhere, because the beauty of the Kelvin temperature is an absolute scale, so zero is the lowest you can go. Zero means zero, zero Kelvin being absolute zero, the coldest temperature uh, we can get to ever. Um, there's videos about that on the internet. Go watch those if you want to learn more. So, must work in Kelvin. I'll tell you what, let's highlight that just to show how important it is. I'm going to colour in the purple word Kelvin in yellow. Let's not forget that. There you go, that's beautiful. Right, good. Um, so we said we're going to look at two things and keep two things the same. So the first ones we're going to look at are pressure and temperature. So we're going to see how pressure affects temperature or how temperature affects pressure, depending on how you want to talk about it. That means for that to be uh, see what's going on, we need to keep these two things constant. Okay, and it's a standard question where they'll say the pressure and temperature were the pressure was varied, temperature was measured, what other things had to keep the, had to be kept the same, and the answer there would be the volume uh, and the mass of the gas or the amount of gas. So we keep a fixed volume and we keep a sealed container. So we're looking at how pressure and temperature uh, affect each other. And the equation you're going to need is P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Okay, so what that means is if you have some fixed volume of gas at some temperature, we'll call T1 and some pressure called P1, and you heat it up and you keep the volume of gas the same, you keep the mass of gas the same, but it's now at T2. Well, let's make sure we change color so we're a hotter gas. So T2 and new pressure, P2. We said earlier, if we heat it up, the particles are going to be whizzing around more, so they're going to be whizzing around faster. Um, so if they're going to be whizzing around more, they're going to be colliding harder with the sides of the wall, they're going to exert more pressure. So we'd expect the temperature increasing to lead to an increase in pressure. So what we're going to look at is we're going to have an example question. So let's just uh, get rid of all this unnecessaryness. I could just add a new page, but 
Never mind. Um, so let's look at a quick example. So we have got uh, a pre. Oh, we've gone back too far. Wonderful. Well done. Right. So we've got, uh, we'll keep the equation, so pressure one over temperature one equals pressure two over temperature two. Um, so we're gonna have an initial temperature of 20 degrees C uh, at 50 kilopascals. And we're gonna go from that situation, so that's before, that's, uh, and then that's gonna become 100 degrees. So we've gone up five times and pressure two. Okay, so if we work that through, we end up with 20 degrees C over, do, 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 do. No, what are we talking about? Brilliant, it's a wonderful stuff, wonderful. Actually, no, this is all wrong. No, because it's in Kelvin. We've got to work in Kelvin. And if you weren't screaming at the video by that point, then shame on you. We must, must work in Kelvin. So let's go back to it and let's start again, because that was, should have upset you and if you weren't screaming Kelvin then shame on you. So the initial pressure is 50 kilopascals. We can leave that in kilopascals, it's just going to give us an answer in kilopascals. If you want to change it um, and can read yellow on the white background that would be 50,000 pascals. Um, the temperature is 20 degrees C but we've got to convert that. Okay so that 20 degrees C becomes 293 Kelvin. Okay then that gets uh, changed to a new pressure, which we don't know, and a new temperature uh, of 100 degrees C, but again, we must work in Kelvin, okay? Let's just get rid of those. So, our equation stays the same, okay? P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Uh, we're just going to put the numbers in before we arrange it, rearrange it, but you could do it the other way around if you want. So we've got 50 kilopascals over 293 Kelvin equals mystery over 373 Kelvin. Okay, so to get P2 on its own, we're going to bring that up there. So we're going to end up with 50 times 373 over 293 uh, equals, ooh, I don't know, around that KPA or 63,700. So just to remind you, if you're not working in Kelvin, you're going wrong. So the temperature went from 20 degrees C to 100 degrees C, which you'd think would be five times the temperature, but it's not, it's only a much smaller increase, which I can't think on the top of my head. So the temperature went from, the pressure went from 50 kilopascals to 63.7 kilopascals. Now, if we plotted a graph of pressure in whatever unit we want, against temperature, but in Kelvin, then we get a nice straight, -ish straight line. We get a straight line because the pressure is directly proportional fish sign, to the temperature. Of course, the temperature is in Kelvin. Okay, pressure is directly proportional to temperature. And what that means is if we double one, if we double the pressure, that's going to lead to double the temperature. Or oh, I suppose the other way around if you want to think of it. If you double the temperature, that's going to lead to double the pressure. Okay, so that's the first one. Second one, we, um, we're going to look at, um, what should we look at this time? He says as if he doesn't know. Uh, we're going to look at, pre that's an eraser, not a highlighter. We're going to look at pressure and volume this time. So if we're gonna investigate those two, we must keep the temperature the same and we must keep the mass of the gas the same. Okay, that's some pro-highlighting there. So for example, uh, here we can see we had some initial pressure, P1, some initial volume, V1, new pressure, P2, new volume, V2, temperatures are the same, and the mass of gas is the same. Okay, must stay the same, otherwise things don't work, and we can see uh, here on the left, um, we've got four particles whizzing around. They're going to collide, small surface area, so the pressure is going to be really fairly high. And when we make the uh, the area much much bigger, the volume much bigger, um, those particles are more spread out, so they're exerting less force over a given area, so the pressure is going to go down. So we would expect the pressure to be bigger in the smaller volume. Let me do it for time. So speed up. Right, there's a page. You saw that a moment ago. So. 
Uh, let's do another quick question. So the new equation we need is P1 V1 equals P2 V2. Okay, insert your own RTD2 jokes. Um, that's the wrong bit of paper. So P1 is 320 kilopascals uh, with a volume of 2 meters cubed and P2 is 80 kilopascals with a volume of mystery. Okay, uh, as our equation, P1 V1 equals P2 V2. Um, and we're just going to have to rearrange it. So let's pick a different color. So we've got 320 kilopascals times 2 meters cubed. Oh, that's a terrible handwriting. Uh, equals 80 kilopascals. Uh, running out of space times V2. Okay, so we're just going to end up with 320 times 2 over 80. It hopefully should equal 8 meters cubed. So what we've seen there is the pressure went from 320 down to 80, so it's gone down by 4. Um, that's an 8. Oh, that's a wonderful 8. Um, the volume has gone up 4 times. Okay, so the pressure has gone down four times because the volume has gone up four times. So this sort of relationship uh, we would call an inversely proportional relationship. So if we put pressure up there, which again we're going to work in kilopascals, and if we work volume down here in meters cubed, and as like that. So let's say we start up here it's got a high pressure and a low volume then as the volume increases the pressure decreases okay so if we want to get a, a more sensible graph more a nice straight line graph we might end up plotting pressure uh, against one over volume okay so one over meters cubed still kilopascals up there okay um, so as I said, it's an inversely proportional relationship. You might need to sketch either of those graphs. Okay, pressure against volume and pressure against one over volume. So make sure you're happy with those. Uh, the last thing I wanted to do is just to get you to uh, have a go at rearranging the, equation, the equations. The equations. Uh, so the first one we said P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Um, so can you pause now and have a go at uh, just get a scrap of paper and rearranging it to give you T1 equals T2 equals P2 equals. Uh, pause now. Okay, I hope you paused there. I certainly did. As you can see by the mystery boxes now appeared. So I also forgot we need to rearrange the first one to get P1 equals. Uh, so hopefully you ended up with uh, P1 equals P2 times T1 over T2. Um, so we just moved the T1 up to the top. Okay, just be really careful when you're moving these things. P2, very similar, uh, equals P1 T2 over T1. Um, and then these two, whoop, hang on. Mm -hmm. And reveal there. So you need to be able to rearrange that into any form, any sort of form whether you do it with the numbers or with the symbols, whichever works best for you. Okay, lastly, uh, let's have a look at the other equations. So P1 V1 equals P2 V2. Again, you're going to want to get P1 on its own, P2 on its own, V1 on its own, V2 on its own. Grab a scrap of paper, pause, do that now. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, I hope you paused there. Magic box has appeared again. Uh, so let's just check it. So P1 uh, equals P2 V2 over V1 so this time all that happens is the V1 goes down underneath okay similarly uh, P1 V1 over V2 P2 V2 over V1 and P1 V1 over P2 so you need to be able to rearrange both of those into uh, any form you're given this equation uh, in front of the paper you don't get given uh, this equation but it's worth being able to remember them both make sure you can use them both and that's about it. So practice rearranging those. Have a go at some questions. Uh, if in doubt, leave a question in the comments below just to show that at least one of you's watched it. Thanks. Bye.